You should keep your risks low when you're living off rental income in retirement. Mark, this is your video. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to episode 126 of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. As always, I am your host, James Wise. And uh, yeah, I'm working with my client. His name is Mark, right? A little bit about Mark. Mark uh, is getting ready to retire. He is living down in Florida. He was working in the software industry and he's ready to call it a day. No more nine to five for him. And throughout the years, uh, he's taken a lot of his earnings and put them in a solo 401k. So Mark, you got about $500,000 to work with, right? And you're going to be living off this money. You're no longer going to have uh, your nine to five job, you know, living out, uh, you know, the rest of your life, uh, living the life of luxury, man, not dealing with the nine to five grind, which is awesome. And I think it's super important. And I think you do too, based upon everything you've said to me, that you keep those risks low. I love the fact that you took your money and you took control of it, right? You didn't leave it uh, to Wall Street to invest for you. You wanted to invest it yourself. And uh, you don't have like, a, you're not like risk adverse, but for this money, you know, what you're trying to do with this money, it just makes sense for where you are in your life to have this be super low risk money, which I totally agree with, man. I love what you're, you're doing with it. And uh, you sent me a couple properties and the first one I want to talk about, okay, 1504 Sherbrooke. Now, on the surface, it looks like it's, uh, it's what we're looking for, right? A nice low risk investment. However, I've been through a lot of due diligence on this particular property, and I want to show you that footage now. Uh, but the topic of today's show is really going to be about structural issues and how they can derail plans. Uh, because I've actually already analyzed this property for another client uh, just a few days ago, as a matter of fact. Husband, wife, team, they've bought several properties from me. And uh, they were interested in purchasing this property. They wanted to just utilize their funds for down payment funds and then pick up a cash flowing rental. And, uh, you know, this is a nice triplex listed at $120,000. So it all made sense. Um, but as we got further into the deal after that analysis, things kind of changed. So what I'd like to do first is have you take a look at that footage now. Moving on to the triplex in South Euclid. Solid B-class neighborhood. This one, another one that's been on the market for too long. 163 days listed at 119,900. 1504 Sherbrooke Road, South Euclid, 44121. This triplex has currently one tenant, and then we've got two empty units. So we do have to do a little bit of repairs, but since it's been on the market so long, I think we'll get a, a nice discount off the current list price. So let's see what we got from the photos. Now, I'm anticipating spending approximately $20,000 on the renovation. Now, when you pull up these photos, you know, things look pretty good. They look pretty nice. That carpet doesn't appear to be too old. The walls are neutral, not necessarily the agreeable gray I like to see, but they're okay. Um, they're like a cream color, not the end of the world, but I want to spend some money in the kitchen, right? This doesn't look good. Like this is a teeny tiny fridge, not even a full size fridge. We got, you know, granny's, uh, whatever the fuck this is called, these border things. All I know is it's old. Nobody's happy about that. You got the little crummy $10 gold light fixture, like this outlet cover. If you actually look, you know, you got a white outlet cover, but actually look at the outlet itself. It's like some gross off-white type thing. So we got to spend some some bones in the kitchen, right? We want to make the kitchens look good. Same thing with the baths, man. Like this is, you know, this is old, right? This is just old, dated, grimy looking. You know, these tiles got to be 40, 50 years old. So we got to put some money into modernizing the kitchens and the baths in these units, making them look good. That's where we want to spend the money. We do that, and we'll have some pretty nice units. Like this kitchen, like... This is just, uh, you know, it's, look at this flooring, right? It's a small kitchen. 
this is uh, not an ideal kitchen, so we at least need to make it cosmetically nicer. I mean, look at this crummy old wooden countertop. I mean, that is not going to work for us. So we're going to really want to, you know, fix this up. We're definitely going to need to repaint this stuff. Um, another granny bathroom, right? So it's just not up to snuff currently. So that's why I want to spend approximately $20,000 fixing it up. We do that, what we'll have is we'll have the current tenant who's paying $800 in a two-bed, one-bath. The other one where I want to do the kitchen, but the rest of the apartment, the cosmetics look pretty good from our photos. That's another two-bed, one-bath. We'll have another person in there at eight. And then the really teeny, tiny one-bedroom without the ideal layout. It's kind of like a bonus unit. Since we're going to make it look so good cosmetically, we'll still be able to get $600. So that's going to be $2,200 hundred bucks a month coming in or twenty six thousand four hundred a year coming in of course we don't get to keep all that so we're gonna budget 110 repairs and maintenance vacancy and non-payment capex taxes taxes are a little higher now because we are in south euclid the tax rate is higher plus the value of this property is going to be higher so 331 a month insurance should still be about 80 bucks a month again Anybody out there, if you want to lower your rate, we not only are appointed through farmers, we're also appointed through a bunch of other random little business-to-business -business niche insurance companies. Not like your Progressive or your Geico companies that advertise on TV, just like little niche stuff that you've probably never heard of. So we're able to like shop your portfolio around, get you guys a super low rate. Because look, man, I get it. You guys are, you guys are real estate investors. You, you don't care about this or that coverage. What you want is a basic fire policy with a huge, huge coverage on liability in case somebody gets murdered or injured at one of your properties. Other than that, you don't need like personal property coverage or you don't want to do the coverage where they cover lost rents. That's all garbage. None of that is good. We got to keep those rates low. That's the best way to do it. And my guys, you know, click that link below and we'll take care of you. Now, back to the numbers on this property, water and sewer. We have three units, so we got to account for more. More people are going to be using that water and sewer. So that should be 225 Lawn care, even though we got three units as opposed to two. Still only got one yard, so 44 And then the PM fee is 220 So on average of that 2200 I anticipate us spending 1230 to operate the property, leaving us NOI every month, 970 That makes this bad boy a 9.3 cap. Down payment, small, 26250 Mortgage is only going to be 78750 After you pay off your mortgage, you still should be able to walk away with, on average, 638 in your pocket. And when you're figuring out your cash-on-cash cash return, remember, you need to divide the amount of money you make after you pay off your mortgage with your initial outlay. So in addition to the $26,250 we put down for the down payment, we also need to factor in that we spent another $20,000 on that renovation. So all into this deal, even though the down payment's only $26,250, you should have roughly $46,250 of your own cash invested in this deal. But since you're gonna be bringing home almost eight grand a year, on average after paying off that mortgage, that's still a 16.55% cash on cash return. And this is just a solid property uh, listed um, by a company called Kiefer Realty. And I think the price, you know, 120, I think since it's been on the market for so long, I think we'll be able to beat that down. 105 is the most I'd like you to pay. That's what I did these numbers on, but we'll probably start Lower, we'll probably start like 96, 97, somewhere in there. Of course, we'll make it violation-free, contingent on, you know, no city violations, things of that nature. We'll make sure we get your inspector in there. We'll make sure it appraises for an amount equal or higher than our contracted purchase price. You know, just all the normal due diligence things that we can do, that we need to do beyond this analysis. Like, this analysis is awesome. This really helps folks out there who are investing in the Cleveland market, especially those investing in the Cleveland market for the first time. This really helps you guys mitigate your risks. But this is just the beginning right this is a desktop video analysis everything I'm doing I'm doing from here from this studio we still need to make sure we get a person physically 
at the property to inspect everything to make sure there's no surprises. And if there are surprises, that's okay. We just need to account for them. You know, there could be, you know, issues. That doesn't mean we walk away from the deal. We try to negotiate a price reduction or try to negotiate the sellers uh, to fix that stuff before you purchase it, right? All right, R. So from all of that footage, I was very high on that particular property at that time. I thought it would make a lot of sense. And I thought $105,000 was the correct price for them to go. Now, like I said, we got further into that deal. They ended up not doing the deal because things changed. And unfortunately, those things are probably also going to prevent you from doing the deal as well. What I've got up on the screen for you now is the inspection report that we were provided um, by the listing agent. You see what had happened is another person tried to purchase this property from the listing agent. We don't have anything to do with that person, okay? And that particular person backed out of the sale after the inspection that you're looking at right now came out. What the major issue was, and this is why my clients decided the deal wasn't going to work for them and why I don't think it's going to work for you, is we have some serious structural concerns with this particular property. These bowing walls in the basement are just going to wreak havoc on the deal, right? Now, what it is to fix this properly, to actually get it the 100% correct way is what you do is you go in and you actually just dig the wall out. You remove the wall and you completely rebuild the wall. Now, the cost for that is approximately $125 to $150 per foot. Now, if I'm guesstimating, I am going to say that this particular property is probably, I don't know, 75 to 100 feet long, maybe 40 to 45 feet wide. So with that cost, depending on um, which two walls, I'm not 100% clear on which two walls, nor am I 100% clear on the actual measurements, but we're looking at a worst case scenario here. If, if they if it is uh, going to be the highest price plus the longest amount of footage, you know, two walls at 100 feet long at 150 bucks a foot, we are looking at approximately $30,000 to 100% correct this foundation issue, get it acceptable for a lender. So because of that, I mean, that could more or less, you know, kill your deal as well right? Because I advise them, hey, if you guys are interested in doing this deal because of these new issues we found, $105,000 is still is way too high for you guys to pay. Same thing for you are, I think the appropriate price that would make this deal make sense would be picking it up at $70,000. Now, if you could pick this property up at $70,000, you'd have to go in cash because of the, the structural issues. And worst case scenario, you're spending 30K to fix this particular issue. There's also a good chance it could be less than 30K. And outside of completely rebuilding the wall, there are other options. Like I've seen a lot of folks, um, you dig out part of the floor and you install huge steel support beams every like five or six feet. Um, you'd probably be able to get that job done for in the ten to fifteen thousand dollar range, and you know structural integrity that would probably be fine. That those walls would probably be just fine with that that system for the next you know fifty years. I don't think the house is ever going to cave in or anything like that. But the issue is, is your lender going to be okay with that um, fix? And the answer is probably not, right? So. To do it 100% right, 100% by the book, you got to redo the walls. And again, that could be approximately, you know, as much as 30K. So if you were able to pick the property up for 70K and then spend all that money, it makes sense. And then you could possibly burn it out. But are the issue with uh, what you're trying to do, the reason I don't think this property is right for you is you have $50,000 to play with right now. So um, we'd have to pick it up for like 70 then you'd need to spend all that money rehabbing it. So, you know, you're going to need, you know, more uh, close to double or more than double. I don't know what the numbers is. I, I didn't, you know, somewhere around double between that and all the other renovations uh, of what your actual cash available is. So for those reasons, I, I don't think this deal is going to work for you. I don't think this is the necessarily going to be the one you want to target. All right, Mark, welcome back. Now, based upon everything you've just seen from me here, I'm thinking that this particular property is a no-go for you, right? If I'm uh, if I'm talking about, hey, super low-risk investment, you know, I got five hundred thousand dollars. I just want to kind of set it and forget it. 
uh, just so I can earn a little bit of income. I do not think major structural issues are going to be what we want to do, right? That's, that's not what we're thinking, okay? Now, you sent me a second property, which we're going to get into. But first, I want to go to a word from the sponsors of today's show. Seller financing can be one of the most profitable ways to quickly grow a large real estate portfolio. Unlike bank financing, there are no term restrictions. Everything is negotiable. This allows for creative terms, including no money down deals and financing for foreign nationals or those with low to no credit. If you would like access to all of the seller finance properties in some of the most affordable rental markets across the United States, Click the show notes below or go to HoltonWise.com and click the property search tab. Rent Tech Direct provides you with an easy to use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With Rent Tech Direct, you will also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. Just enter the details of your property and Rent Tech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia, and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. Welcome back, Mark. Now, the next property that you sent me, uh, this is another one, right? On the surface, right? It, it seems to be low risk, right? 19100 Lakeshore Boulevard, Euclid, Ohio, just listed a couple days ago for $159,900 by a company called Home Smart Real Estate Momentum. That's a mouthful, man. That's a mouthful. <laughs> I've never worked with these folks before, uh, but I ain't going to forget that name. Now, Cruising through the photos, dude. We got a nice stately looking triplex, right? This looks pretty good. Um, but when we get inside, I want you to know everything is extremely dated in this thing, man. Like this pink tile uh, in the kitchen here, right? That's like original tile. We got the original cabinetry, okay? Uh, just, you know, original tile in the bathroom, right? Everything is, is fairly dated. Uh, but as far as the property itself is concerned, the, the bones appear to be nice. So I could see why you believe uh, it's going to be low risk. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's probably low risk. Uh, but here's the thing. Now, you've told me down in Florida, you already have a property. OK, you got a rental property and it's kicking you off a nice solid 13 percent ROI. Right. That's a great ROI. OK, so. If you have the ability to pull in 13% ROI in a market like Florida, I think that's pretty cool, man. With this particular property, the risks themselves, they're, they're not extremely high. So I'm not saying this is high risk, right? I love the neighborhood. Euclid is a solid neighborhood. It's anchored by Amazon. We got a new Amazon fulfillment center. I love that. But from a cash flow perspective, uh, you know, I'm just not, I'm not seeing it, right? It's, it should be able to exceed what you're doing in Florida, right? Florida is a great appreciation market, right? There are more people moving to Florida than moving away from Florida. Unfortunately, we do not have that same type of thing happening up here in the Midwest, right? So people come to the Midwest looking for cash flow. So theoretically, you know, I would like to deliver you guys uh, with properties that cash flow better here than they do in a neighborhood like Florida, as far as this one, does it, you know, does it do that? Let's take a look at the rent roll, right? Two of those units occupied, right? One's a two bed, one bath at 650. The other is a one bed, one bath. It's a third floor unit, which is, uh, you know, not something I'm like super excited about either. These, these conversion ones where they slap the units in the attic. I'm not saying never buy them. I'm not saying it's like a red flag. Don't ever buy them, but you know, the juice has to be worth the squeeze. And sometimes the units, they're a little wonky. They're a little smaller. You're always going to get a little bit less rent. You're always going to see a higher amount of turnover. So keep that in mind. It's not like we have three true units here. We have two true units and one kind of goofy unit, right? That's rented at 575. And then the last unit, right? That's unit one. That is the vacant one. Now the market rent for that's going to be 750 a month, okay? But we got to do some work, dude. We got we got to we got to do some work, right? I talked about uh you know, 
everything's like original, right? We got to put approximately 15 G's into this, man. To get 750, we're going to have to get rid of these, you know, yellow walls, right? We're going to have to paint everything agreeable gray. As far as the flooring in there, that just like old, nasty looking flooring. And I guess it's not nasty. It's just old, it's dated. It's not cool. That's not going to fly if we're trying to get a tenant in there paying 750. So we're going to have to do the floors in there. As far as the rest of the unit, right? The carpet, get rid of that. You know, refinish hardwoods or place, you know, new vinyl flooring in there. We're going to have to knock that out. Hit all the trim white. We're going to have to replace these original fixtures in the kitchens and the baths, right? So we're going to need to spend approximately 15 Gs, right? So when this is all said and done, we got our two units already occupied. Let's just leave them be. No sense uh, kicking those tenants out to completely update everything, right? Uh, so we'll just have to spend the money in the one vacant unit. You do that, we'll have a rent roll of nineteen seventy-five a month or $23,700 a year. But what they have this thing listed at, man, $159,900. So if we got $159,900 for the acquisition, $15,000 uh, for the reno to get to that rent, right? We'll be all into this asset for $174,900. Now, as far as the numbers, what's it going to look like? Fairly safe investment, no high risk tenants uh, per se here. 1975 is going to come in. I anticipate you're going to spend 1246, which leaves you with an NOI of 729 a month. Now, one thing you got to look at too, uh, which is kind of a downside to Euclid itself. Okay, look at those taxes: 383 a month, almost five grand a year. Now. If you go to the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, okay, you go to holdmice.com tools and resource tab, you could uh, check that out. I grade all the neighborhoods in the, in the Cleveland area, A to F scale, right? <clears throat> a being lowest risk, F being highest risk. Euclid, low risk neighborhood, love it. But I've also included the tax rate. As you'll see, Euclid has a higher tax rate. So if we're going to go for larger properties that are going to, you know, cost more, uh, you know, that, that you're going to see that hit your wallet hit your ROI when you're in an area like Euclid, right? You know, for the, the higher the value of the properties, our, our percentage of what we have to pay to taxes, it's already higher. So it's really going to, you're really going to start to feel that into your cash flow as opposed to if you buy something cheaper, something smaller, and you could like a single family. So that's just something to keep in mind. I'm not saying that means don't invest in Euclid. I love Euclid. I just want you guys to be cognizant of the fact that your taxes are going to be higher there. I like to see that offset, and we usually do, by higher rents in Euclid, but the deal with this particular property uh, is, you know, we don't have like three true units, right? So we're not ever going to be able to bring in 750 per unit, right? We got the one unit, which is kind of wonky. It's an attic unit, so that's always going to be lower. And then everything is just so damn dated, it doesn't make any sense to kick a $650 tenant out just to drop 15 Gs, replace an original cabinetry to get them up to 750, right? So because of all that, dude, all those factors coming in, if you paid what they want you to pay and you did the little rental we need to get that rent, right? You know, we're bringing in 729 a month on average. That only results for you in a five cap, right? 5% return on your money. Cause you're paying cash, right? You got your solo 401k funds. You're just paying cash, right? So we'd be at like a 5% ROI. If you could be in Florida at a 13% ROI, you know, the market that's got much better appreciation prospects than Cleveland, I would say as your broker, it would be irresponsible of me to try to talk you into investing, you know, almost $200,000 here in Cleveland to earn a return that's less than half of what you're currently getting in a higher appreciation based market. And they just listed this particular property like five days ago, right? I'm not saying it's going to sell at this price, but the price you would need to offer, like, dude, we'd have to lowball them by like 40 K or something for the numbers to start to make more sense. And it just hit the market. I really don't, I don't see that panning out. So I, I don't really see a need to look into this particular property for you much further. I don't think it's really going to work, uh, you know, as far as what you're trying to do. Yes, there's low risk assets out there. And yes, I could find some for you uh, that are going to kick off a better return, which is what I imagine we're going to want to do on your next video. Cause you did purchase the 10 property package uh, from me. So we got another eight I'm going to be doing for you. And another thing too, that I want to talk about it's Florida, right? You're, you're investing some of your funds in Florida, 13% ROI in Florida. I love that. Currently, right now, we are working with another provider, newer provider we just started working with in Florida. It's called GTL Real Estate. 
So as opposed to seeing you send your money up here north to me for this property, I'd much rather see you reach out to GTL Real Estate. So let me quickly go to a word from GTL Real Estate. Property management doesn't have to be complicated. With our use of cutting edge technology, such as electronic lockbox showings, e-virtual tours, and AI tenant screening, GTL Real Estate is one of the safest and most efficient property management firms serving the Atlanta, Georgia, and Daytona Beach, Florida markets. We offer our clients a wide range of pricing plans, as well as several risk-reducing guarantees, including an eviction, rent collection, and 21-day lease guarantee. Visit gtlrealestate.com or click the show notes below to contact our team today. All right, Mark. So again, you might want to reach out to GTL Real Estate, talk about possibly doing a little bit more investing in your home market in Florida. And then in my opinion, I think what you should do is hold off on both of these properties and then have me and my team uh, start hunting for you, seeing what we can find you, see if we can find you something else. And then there's one more thing I noticed about this Lakeshore property, not to poo-poo on this, like it is a, a pretty decently nice property. I just don't think it's gonna work for you. I don't think the numbers are gonna make sense here. One other thing though I wanted to present to you that I don't really like. Look at this photo here, right? This is of the basement. We have a finished basement. now. A lot of times you guys, oh, finished basement, more square footage. That's great. I love it. I do not like to see finished basements in these old Cleveland multi-units, right? It never adds to the value. As a matter of fact, it just adds to our problems, right? Here's the thing. In the Cleveland market, especially over in Euclid, right up on the lake, dude, we got a, a high water table here, and a lot of these homes are very old, so getting moisture coming into your basement. You know, that's a very common occurrence we see out here in the Cleveland market. So that's one thing to be cognizant of. Not a big deal when you just have unfinished space, you got dry lock paint down there, you're only dealing with the basements for a spot for the tenants to, uh, you know, do their laundry. It's common space, right? Nobody lives there, right? So with this, we add no value, right? Nobody's using this. It's down there in its common area. Nobody's using it. And, you know, we got high water tables. So, like, I just think this is a hassle. This could be a potential mold issue. Uh, the reason they finished it is, from my research, it appears that this property was uh, just owned by an owner-occupant, right? They lived in one of the units. They rented out the other, or they had family living in the other throughout the years, like one owner for many, many years. So, in that particular situation, I could see why you'd want to finish your, um, your basement. But from a pure investment standpoint, you know, as investors, guys, I don't uh, want you guys out there thinking finished basements in Cleveland are going to be a pro for your multifamily rental properties. I only see that being an additional hassle. I don't like to see it, right? So just uh, one more reason, Mark. Uh, I just, I'm not feeling this particular investment for you. I mean, of course, if you still want to buy it, we'll, of course, represent you. I just think we can do better. We can do better here in Cleveland. I think you could probably even do better reaching out to GTL down there in Florida. So that's what I've got for you after uh, reviewing both of these properties for you. Let me know your thoughts. My, you know, with my team, we emailed this to you in the private link. So let us know your thoughts. Uh, typically after we send out one video, especially one like this where you sent us properties and we didn't think either of them made sense for what you're trying to do, let us know your new thoughts and kind of the direction you'd like to see us go on the next film. What I'd like to do is seek out some nice low risk B class properties for you, whether they be single family or multifamily. I'd like to 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 go out there and try to find you something, perhaps something uh, with higher rents per unit and maybe even something that's got a little bit lower tax rate. So that's all I've got for you today, Mark. Everybody else out there, if you guys like today's show, if you like what we're doing for you, you like this transparent look into the real estate investment industry and you'd like to work with our team, I want you to go to holtonwise.com, click the property search for sale tab, scroll down to the MLS search analysis show, sign yourself up to work with us, get the most transparent, unbiased information on your investments possible. A lot of you guys don't go out there and buy properties without getting a home inspection, which is great, but that only looks into stuff inside the four walls. Your home inspector ain't going to break it down for you as a financial investment. And I tell you, the 5,000 other realtors we got up here in the Cleveland market, they're really not going to do that either, guys, because 99.9% .9 of them focus solely on residential real estate, right? They view a house as a home. 
A house is a place where a family buys it, then they move into it. White picket fence, 2.5 kids, dog in the backyard barking, right? That's not what we do here at Holton Wise. On Holton Wise TV, all we do is treat these as what they are to us, which is monetary investment vehicles, and we break them down as such. So we offer very unique products and services that I don't believe you'll get anywhere else on the globe. So if you'd like to uh, start building your portfolio today, again, holtonwise.com, property search for sale tab, click the MLS search and analysis show. That's all I've got for today. As always, I am James Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. Good day, everyone. It's Angela Ramora here, your favorite Australian and the founder and owner of Ohio Cashflow. Over the last five years, Ohio Cashflow has established itself as the most reputable turnkey real estate investment company in the country. We offer solid B-class properties in Toledo, Ohio. We work and live in the same areas that we sell in. So when we sell your property, your tenants become our neighbors. We only take on a handful of investors every month so for your chance to work with one of the best in the business, please fill out our investor application form, which you can find in the video notes below. Thanks for listening. And as we say down under, I'll catch you later, mate. Is that it? Yeah, we're done. All right, cool. U.S. REIB is a full-service turnkey provider offering investors the opportunity to purchase single-family and multifamily investment properties in Cincinnati, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, and Kansas City, Missouri. The purchase process is seamless, from reserving a property to obtaining financing, inspections, and insurance referrals, U.S. REIB has a dedicated team in place to manage the process from start to finish. In addition, U.S. REIB is also directly integrated with its own private placement fund for accredited investors. The fund seeks to raise $10 million to capitalize on the repositioning of distressed single-family and multifamily real estate. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.